Yeah, very unfortunate. To another open frame from his lane. Guy back in the groove. Yeah, pretty happy with that shot. Pretty relaxed. And really must have the feeling now that um, he's just coasting. Just got to keep the ball on the lane. And he's going to make some pins. Well, he's not quite bending that lead leg as much as you would expect. You normally expect him to get right down close to the lane. And it's all to do with the fact that he's just not comfortable with his approach. But he'll get there. Yeah, of course, if you're not comfortable, Simon, that, that, that your shoe will slide, obviously, um, as Guy is doing. He's sort of planting his foot rather than sliding, so it's uh, looking perhaps a little bit more ungainly than, uh, than normal. This lane then looking for strikes. That's the only way out of the predicament she's in. She's got to strike this one off the card. It's not happening, I'm afraid, for the young Dutch woman in her debut at the World Tempin Masters. Yeah, very unfortunate that was. Slightly high in the pocket. It could have carried all ten, but it's left herself the uh, six and the eight pin split. Just a fraction high cut through. It's a tricky little spare. It is makeable. She has to hit that right hand pin on the right hand side with a feather duster. And she can't do it. And that's another open frame, unfortunately. Well, sporting applause from the crowd here in Barnsley, but I think they're as disappointed as Hislaine is at the moment in her performance. Yeah, mum and dad are in the audience and uh, national coach as well here to support Hislaine. Uh, they'll be slightly disappointed to uh, see the way the, the match is going so far. Now, Guy Kaminsky, let's see if he can get these feet sorted out. A little more comfortable as he came in there, but... Well, it's bizarre, isn't it? It was a better approach, and he doesn't get the strike. Yeah, just a fraction high on the head pin. Broke up the 4-9 four, four split. Definitely not uh, planting that foot properly. Having a bit of trouble there. But he's got to carry on, and he's got to overcome it. You can see the frustration on his face. It's, uh, it's something that all bowlers have when they can't plant that foot and slide smoothly as they want to, confidently. That's cause a problem, and whoops, oh so dear. Well, his second open of uh, this match, and Guy Kaminsky and his lane, van der Tol, are stumbling their way towards the end of this one. That's well, not the knee bend you would expect from Kaminsky normally. Threw his strike ball at that one. I wonder why he didn't get his spare ball out, just throw straight at it, which he would do a 1,000 times normally. You know, oh. 999 times out of 1,000. He just didn't do it that time. It's a lack of concentration. And it may be the, the sliding of the foot that's, uh, that's causing that... Uh, Lack of attention. It's a basic error. Unfortunately, it's not hurting him too much because uh, his lane has also had the open frames. She's making no headway, not catching Guy back at all. Well, she needs those strikes to reel him in. And if I tell you what, Cass, if she'd struck out from the start here, then Kaminsky would have been in a bit of trouble. Just checking uh, the lead foot as well. Making sure the grip's OK. And that's the scorecard for van der Tol in this second game. And I'm afraid it's those two frames in the middle that have caused the problem. Kaminsky yeah. straight back into it. Thumps another one into the pocket, but he's not getting the results. Now he's going to have to uh, <coughs> grit his teeth now. He's had a couple of single pin misses and uh, out comes the spare ball. Hard and straight, this will go. He really can't afford to miss this one. Because uh, bowling buddies like uh, Jason Belmonte wouldn't live him, let him live it down. Nor would I. Good cover. <laughs> and a right royal celebration from Kaminsky after that. You don't normally get that when you get a single pin spare. But I think that's just the relief for Kaminsky. Absolutely, yes, yeah. No doubt we'll be talking this one through uh, in the bar late tonight. And he'll be uh, recalling some of his strikes. So, this one not quite dead yet. Hislaine van der Tol has to get into the strike. She must start to string these together. A little time to uh, reset the pins there. A bit more time for her to think, which is maybe what she doesn't want at this stage. Yeah, not that uh, aligned with uh, the foot problems that uh, they've both been having on this approach. 
Doesn't bode well. Well, that's the sort of delivery you saw from his lane right at the start of this match, and she's back into it for a double. Absolutely, yeah, what a great shot that was. Two strikes in a row. And maybe she's thinking to herself, well, you know, maybe it's not quite as hard as I'm making it out to be. This is closer than Kaminsky would have liked after such a good start. Welcome back to the World 10-Pin Masters. Commentary comes from Cass Edwards and Simon Golding. Guy Kaminsky then needs to get back into the strikes to relieve some pressure, and that'll do nicely. Yeah. The South African takes another big step towards the quarterfinals. Yeah, he's not going to worry how the strikes come as long as they come now. Great rotation, nice bit of back end there. It's the pocket and carries 10. Yeah, he looks comfortable again, doesn't he? The 30-year-old from Durban in South Africa. Just can't seem to get things right in this tournament. It's his sixth attempt, and uh, the crowd love to see him here. He's one of the best bowlers that Africa have ever produced. And it's so important for that part of the world that he does deliver something, and if, if he can do it this year, that would be superb. It's Lane van der Tol, then, from uh, a long line of very good Dutch bowlers. Well, couldn't quite make it a turkey. She hasn't managed it in the match so far, and she hasn't managed it there. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. Actually made the pocket on the left-hand side of the headpin there. Just couldn't kick that seven pin out, and that would have made a turkey for her. So, again, she cannot string the strikes together. And this is why Guy is in the, uh, the almost comfort zone that he's in. He's not, he's not over-worried now. He's just got to keep the ball in the lane, keep it in play, do nothing silly. He'll probably afford to spare his way out for the last four frames. I must say, after what we've seen in this match so far, Cass, we're, we're still hedging our bets, aren't we? We're in the same <laughs> comfort zone as opposed to win, which is what it really should be for Kaminsky from here. But yeah, absolutely. Both players having their problems. Again, back to the... Uh, bottom of that shoe to make sure it's completely clean it's basically a, a sole that allows the bowler to slide on towards the delivery line watch this from Kaminsky there it goes he's just jammed up again but he's got the line yeah those, the soles on those shoes are interchangeable they actually peel off and you can put uh, with sort of a, a Velcro base you can uh, stick them to the sole of your shoe but here again guy is stuck you can see his left foot's just turned right round made the pocket so you know he's happy with that double for Kaminsky then as I said he's just got to keep the ball on the lane keep it in play stay clean meaning not having any open frames and uh, he's going to be there at the finish line one or two unfortunate experiences for Gislaine in this uh, this match so far let's just hope she can finish with uh, some sort of style yeah, something's uh, just caught her eye. She went into approach. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that was. Maybe some of the audience just moved. Oh dear, everything's happening now. The mobiles are going off. And it's so important for the crowd to stay calm and...